Aerosocks are one of those topics that often get brushed aside as just another marketing stunt, something else to sell you. However, as ultra-long distance cyclists, we can benefit from every advantage. Uh, they can save us time, save us energy, even if the advantages are too small to actually notice or feel. They can still be measured, and if they can be measured, they might be useful for us. So today we're going to examine aerosocks. We'll look at the claims, see if those claims are plausible, and if there is an actual advantage to gain, are they still a practical choice for us, or are they too compromised in their usability to be of a benefit to our performance? Let's dive in. We'll start with claims made by sock manufacturers and wind tunnel test results. Like most marketing and cycling, aerosock claims are difficult to compare due to each company publishing different test speeds, protocols, and baseline comparisons for testing. To make the data comparable, claimed watt savings at the tested speeds can be transformed to a CDA delta versus the baseline figure, and watts saved at net headwinds relevant to endurance cyclists are calculated from there. Feel free to pause the video to take a look at the details and data in the table. Here are a few observations I noticed when looking at the data and the tests. First, both Silka and Rule 28's marketing reported greater benefits than other tests, including by a rider they both sponsor. Silka's website was vague with claim specifics. Aside from their own sock performing well, and presumably the defeat knit aero sock performing poorly, Rule 28 test results showed other aero socks performed similarly. Winstead's Beat Shop independent tests at the A2 wind tunnel found socks outperform shoe covers. Similar relative trends as the Rule 28 tests were also measured, but with a lesser overall advantage, with the Rule 28 sock outperforming no pins, which outperformed Silka. Descriptions of Velo Toes and No Pins baseline socks suggested they were chosen as particularly poor performers. Claims by No Pins on the Flow Socks product page have no speed referenced. Bike Radar tested older model Rule 28 socks, which, aside from the older design, may have reduced performance due to use and washing effects on the fabric. Castelli published small gains and questioned the validity of tests performed by other companies. Now it's time to really get lost in the sauce. What is the mechanism of effect of aerosocks working? Well, compared to a normal sock, aerosocks are claimed to trip the air to artificially create a turbulent boundary layer around the leg, which delays flow separation, reducing the size of the low pressure zone behind the calf. Less air being dragged along in the low pressure zone behind your legs means less energy spent. Most aerosocks feature very thin ribbed lycra leg sections, and the tiny ribs supposedly do the air tripping. Fabric choice, fit, and gripper implementation impact effectiveness of the effect at different speeds. No Pins prefers smooth fabrics facing the wind, tripping the air on the sides with the seam and textured fabric. Silka and Defeat use normal knit fabric with raised patterns to trip the boundary layer. Is tripping the boundary layer a plausible mechanism for these gains though? Uh, to my understanding, yes. And I'd love to have the engineers double check my generalizations in the comments. Uh, basically, turbulent boundary layers that delay flow separation are more efficient on small blunt objects moving at slow speeds in the air since pressure drag dominates total drag in this condition. The added uh, friction drag caused by a turbulent boundary layer is less impactful in these conditions. In this context, the sock fabric ribs act like dimples on a golf ball. Airplanes, cars, bike helmets, and aerobike frames can be shaped to reduce pressure drag and benefit from the lower surface friction from a smooth laminar boundary layer. That can't be done to legs. Based on my measurements, my aerosocks cover 550 square centimeters of frontal area on my cylinder-shaped lower legs that are constantly exposed to clean air. That makes them a sizable target for improved aero efficiency. There are some questions about this effect though. Ribbed aero socks made of lycra significantly outperform knit aero socks, which in turn barely edge out standard socks, suggesting either that boundary layer tripping has only a minor impact or that knit fabrics just don't do it well. Let's explore. Knit cycling socks are typically made with a thick knit fabric, uh, with my Defeat aerator socks at two and a half millimeters thick uh, for each layer. The fabric is permeable, allowing the air to run through like a filter, which of course requires some energy to do. Think of the dog van from Dumb and Dumber. The fabric may be thick and permeable enough that the boundary layer doesn't act like it does with solid objects. And while I suspect that may negate potential tripping benefits, that opinion is not supported by any evidence at all. Additionally, the fabric layer on my Lacole Aero Socks is only half a millimeter thick, 
Smaller frontal area with a fabric that doesn't catch the air may explain the gap between knit arrow socks and ribbed arrow socks in the tests. So it seems like there is an advantage, but how are they to use and are they suitable for an endurance cyclist? Personally, I really like the way they feel, even a bit more than a regular knit sock. The fabric is really light, it's cool, and it feels a little bit silky. My sweat doesn't overwhelm the fabric in normal use. I've even started buying gloves made of similar fabric just because it feels good. The lower sock part is just normal, nothing special. Overall, they're my go-to event socks for as much as how they feel as for their potential efficiency gains. I really like them. But not everything is perfect. Uh, the ribbed fabric is really fragile. I accidentally washed them one time with regular sports clothes, and they got some minor damage from a single wash early in their life. Gloves made of similar fabric also have a shorter lifespan. Now, uh, both the gloves and the socks get washed in a delicates bag, and the socks don't really go for many training rides, so I can try to make them last as long as possible. A common complaint from others is the arrow socks fall down. I've used mine for over 2,500 kilometers and mostly on rides over 200K. I've never had one fall down and my leg is pretty average sized, but not everyone will have the same experience. The fit tolerance of this ribbed lycra fabric is really narrow compared to a normal knit sock. Those with larger calves may find the fit of some brands or sizes uncomfortably tight, which also reduces the arrow advantage of the fabric at least according to a message I got from Rule 28. Those with thin calves have more risk of the socks falling down just because they were made for more average size people. In conclusion, claims of arrow sock gains in most company marketing materials are likely greater than what the average rider will experience. Several claims lack needed details for credibility, which is pretty normal in the cycling product space. Skepticism is needed when reading or watching any content on this subject. But overall, a significant benefit does exist in tests. Its mechanism is plausible, and it consistently is measured, especially in thin lycra socks. While mostly looking identical, moderately snug fit and effective gripper implementation should be top priorities if you're shopping. Message companies about sizing, especially when shopping online, as the risk of a poor fit is higher than with standard socks. Overall, I would recommend lycra aero socks to long distance cyclists for the saved energy and the silky feeling fabric, but only as long as a suitable fit can be established. Knit arrow socks are a much less clear performance proposition, but at least the Silka ones have a really nice aesthetic. My Lacole arrow socks are getting a little bit long in the tooth, and they're going to need to be replaced soon. I'm probably going to replace them with just the same model, even though these are quite ugly. And that's because I know that they fit well, and that fit is really important. If I were going into it blind though, I'd probably be choosing the Rule 28 socks. Uh, they have the most compelling evidence that theirs is a superior product. And I know that with my thick calves, the fit would not be a problem at all. More than that though, I'm looking forward to when someone puts out a full length aerodynamic fabric legging. that covers the full length of your leg for maximum gains, maximum silkiness, good sun protection, and minimum fashion. Until then, let me hit you with some bonus watts. Winstead Speed Shop found 3.7 watts or 0 0.002 CDA saved by taping the bottom of his cleats. At this point, why not? Ride safe, everyone, and see you in the next video.